and light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that it may give, that it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Go to Habakkuk, the second chapter. Uh, uh, Habakkuk, the second chapter in the first verse, which is where we're going to draw a lesson text from today. The Bible says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. The Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it shall surely come. It will not tarry. Father, in the name of Jesus, anoint me now to preach this word open our hearts and our minds to receive it. We bind the enemy that would try to limit even one word from accomplishing the purpose in which you are about to send it. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. In the first part of this series, we talked about the 13th verse which said that we, you, me, all of us in here today are the salt of the earth. We explored salt in four messages. First, we learned that salt is a seasoning, which means that as salt, everything we touch ought to get better. That we season. What we do is we allow people to taste God that don't know who God is because we're the salt. Number two, the second message is we are preservative. When you take meat and salt it, you arrest the degenerative process. You arrest bacteria and mold from growing. And that meat can last. So we are a preservative in the environment that we live. We're also a disinfectant. Many times if you get your tooth pulled, back in the day you could tell us to gargle with salt water. It promotes healing. It cleanses out bacteria and promotes healing. And the fourth message we gave you was that we are an offering. Salt. God says, do not bring me a sacrifice with worldly honey or worldly yeast but bring it with salt, salted uh, uh, sacrifice. We gave you those messages, and I encourage you to go back and listen to those four and understand the first part of your dual responsibility, which is to bring seasoning, salt, and preservative as salt of the earth. Today, we want to look at the second part of our responsibility, and that is to be a light. Everybody say light. Light, light, light. Last week I gave you a message entitled, The Darker It Gets, The Brighter We Shine. A lot of Christians got this confused and thought when stuff was getting bad and negative that somehow they was doing something wrong, that God ain't with me. Let me be real clear. Light don't shine best in a bright situation. When I was in corporate America, I wanted the worst job. I wanted the hardest assignment. I wanted the department that nobody else wanted to manage. You know why? Because that gave me an opportunity to shine. Because I wanted to get ahead. And I knew I was not going to get ahead being mediocre, being average, being anything. So give me the darkness because I'm going to make it shine. baby. And that's what your call is. When you see your world getting dark, just smile and say, it's time to shine. When you see things going crazy, folk getting laid off, money not working out, look at your neighbor and say, it's time to shine. And so last week we talked about how to shine when you get dark, how to shine when people get dark, and how to shine when this world is dark. In overpowering your flesh, overcoming your people, and overshadowing your world. Let's move on to another aspect of being the light of the world, and that is influencing people with your light. Uh, uh, through two things. It's actually going to be a two-part message. One is vision, and the other one is direction. Vision and direction. Because the world is so dark, the darkness of this world, existing both within us, within our people, and in our environment, <laughs> it is our assignment to bring divine vision and direction to the world in which we exist in to the environment, to the, uh, uh, to the world that God has placed us in. We are to bring vision and direction. 
I need you to understand. We live in a world where there is no vision. When you are dark, when everything around you is dark, you don't know where you're going. And the Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. And so the people in this world are perishing because there is no vision. Also, there is no direction. The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ways are the ways of death. The rulers of the darkness of this world, we look at the four unclean spirits, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual witnesses in high places. They have designed and created such a dark world that most of the people in this world are wandering aimlessly. No vision, that is no place to go and no direction, no way how to get there. And so I need everybody to understand that God specifically called you to those people to give them vision, show them where they're going, and direction, showing them how to get there. Uh, 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 the 119th Psalm and the 105th verse says, The word is a lamp unto my feet, that is my direction, uh, 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 which step to take, which path to take, and it is a light unto my path, that is the vision, where I am going. Next week, we're going to talk about direction, your path. See, uh, uh, you need to understand something. First and foremost, you need a vision. Where are you going? I'm going to California. Okay, now I got a vision. But then I need to know how I'm going to get to California. That's direction. That's the path. So today we're going to talk about your vision. Next week we're going to talk about how you're going to get to it. Somebody say hallelujah. Our lesson text gives us a solution. Because we are the light, people are drawn to us. When they get there, do we have their vision? Do we have their direction? Our lesson text showed us the people were in this same situation with Habakkuk. They didn't know what was going on. They didn't have answers. They felt lost, confused, distraught. In darkness. And Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he that is God will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And in other words, he went because the people didn't know. He went to God and watched for the answer. What God gave him was a vision. A vision. He came back with not only a vision for the people, but he came back with a process for all of us to follow. And I need you all to understand, if you're here today, I need you to understand that you are a leader, that you are a light, that somebody somewhere in this world is looking to you. And you have a responsibility, just as Habakkuk, to be that light. You are the light of the world. People are lost. They are dark. They are destitute. And God has called you, whether you are single or married. He's called your life. He's called the way you work. He's called the way you live. You are the light of the world and some people are going to get to God depending on how you shine your light. Habakkuk's solution showed us exactly what we need to do. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The series is Influencing the Culture. This is Light of the World Part 2. Today's message is entitled, Revealing the Vision. Revealing the Vision. Three quick points I want to make in revealing the vision today, and that is watching for the vision, writing the vision, and waiting on the vision. Watching, writing, and waiting. Everybody say, watching for the vision. Rebecca said in our lesson text, I will stand upon my watch. Without a watchman, people will never get their vision. Without a watchman, people will never get their vision. A lot of people today are walking around in darkness because the person in their life who was called to be the light stopped watching. Mm, can I preach in this place? 
Isaiah 56 and 10, I don't have time to wait, but y'all can write this down, says this, his watchmen are blind who would look out for uh, 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 and are ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. The reason why I'm here is because when I was in darkness, I had a watchman. Prophets in the old time were called watchmen. The relevance there being the watchman was the person that would stand on guard while everybody else slept. And their role as the watchman was to keep an eye open to be able to warn the people if the enemy showed up. Can I preach? A watchman, a watchman. But if a watchman is blind, <laughs> he not only can't see, and then the Bible says, and he's dumb, meaning that he cannot speak. So even if he could see, he can't even tell you nothing. Can't warn you of approaching danger. And therefore, because too many of us have gotten into a state where we're no longer watching and no longer barking, people all around us are perishing. Three of y'all like that. A blind watchman can't see the vision. A dumb or mute watchman can't bark and warn when danger threatens. But as light of the world, we must be willing to watch for the vision. He said, I will go to the tower and watch. I know y'all don't know what to do, so hold right here and let me go get the vision. The people around us don't know what they're doing. They don't know where they're going. They are lost. They are frustrated. They are aggravated. They, they try this. They try that. This ain't working. That ain't working. They don't have answers. Uh, they are confused. They need a watchman, a watchwoman who will go and get the vision. As a watch person, you got to have what I call double vision. Somebody say double vision. Double vision means that you got one eye on God and one eye on the devil. You got to have an eye in the front of your head. I'm preaching right now. And an eye in the back of your head. One eye is telling you where you're going and why eye is watching who's trying to keep you from getting there. See, a watchman must have one eye on God. That is the vision. The Bible says in Matthew 25 and 13, Watch therefore, for you know not neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man can come. Uh, uh, when, when, and, and, and so, because we are the light uh, and there are people in darkness around us, it is our role, our responsibility uh, to be watchful, to watch out and to understand, God, what are you saying about these people that you've placed in my life? What is it that I should be sharing? What is the vision that they need to have? As a pastor, I'm a watchman, but as a saint of God, each one of you are watchmen and watchwomen. Uh, there are children and unsaved loved ones and co-workers and family members and all of these people who may not know the God that you know, uh, and therefore you are the light in their life, uh, and God calls you to be just as Rebecca, to go to the tower and to watch, uh, to go to the tower and to get a vision to go to the tower and to know what thus said the Lord but not only should you watch for where they're going but you need to watch for what's going to try to keep them from getting there and so the Bible says be sober be vigilant for your adversary the devil as a roaring lion is seeking whom he may devour that is one eye is on God seeking the face of God crying out to God seeking what God has to say but one eye is on the devil because you got to learn how to overcome his evil with God's good. Saints of God, I pray. 
appreciate that many of you all are at church, but you need to understand uh, while you were sleeping, uh, the devil was uh, uh, plotting uh, and planning to destroy your home, to destroy your marriage, to destroy your children, to destroy your career, to destroy your church. Uh, and if you don't have one eye on him as well as on God, uh, I'm a preacher in this place. Uh, see, see, when, 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 when Moses came, preach right there, Pastor Will, to deliver the children of Israel, he gave them a vision because they was lost in darkness and bondage uh, for 400 years. He gave them a vision of the promised land. But on their way to the promised land, Pharaoh came up the rear. Uh, so now he had to have a vision for the enemy. I'm a preacher in this place. Uh, he had to be able to tell them what to do next uh, because just because you know where you're going don't mean there ain't some adversary that's going to try to keep you from getting there. Uh, many people are started out, uh, but they didn't plan for the devil. Preach right there. Uh, and so there is a time in your life where you need to be able to share to people. I see the devil trying to destroy you, uh, but I got a word from God, uh, and that word is uh, that God is working it out for you. Uh, don't you get disturbed by what you're going through, uh, because God's got a plan to get you through it. Uh, I see the devil coming in like a flood uh, to drown you, but that's all right, because uh, God told me to tell you no weapon uh, that is formed against you uh, shall prosper. I know you thought you was going to die. Huh? But God told me to tell you you're going to live, baby, and here's how you're going to do it. Huh? See, saints of God, huh? we are the watchmen that stand on the wall. Huh? We go get the vision, huh? and then we also huh, have the plan to deal with the devil. Somebody say hallelujah. Huh? Say it again. Hallelujah. Huh? The saints of God must understand I got one eye on God, huh? and I got one eye on the enemy. Huh? While I'm praising God, I'm also binding the devil. I'm also rebuking the enemy. I'm also letting him know you will not have my home. You will not have my children. God called my son. I know he's struggling right now. I know my loved one is in drugs, but God, hallelujah, whom God has set free is going to be free indeed. And if I have to touch and agree with two or three, say that you will not have them because I'm the watchman. I see you playing. And I see your plot, but greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And so while I know God's going to deliver you, I also got a word for that devil that's trying to take you. And saints of God, we are the ones where the Bible says where two or three are gathered together. He would be there in the midst of them. And so although I'm playing for your future, I'm also plotting against the devil to let him know that, oh, when we come together. Whatever I bind on earth uh, shall be bound in heaven and whatever I loose uh, on earth uh, shall be loosed in heaven and so everybody in your life uh, that has been assigned to your world, uh, you got two responsibilities. Uh, number one, uh, make sure you loose the blessings of God over their life. Uh, that you shine your light so that they can see where they're going but make sure you also bind the devil uh, who came to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, I bind uh, the enemy that wants you to go into divorce. I bind uh, the enemy that wants you to become a homosexual or a lesbian. I bind the devil uh, that wants you to walk away from God. Uh, hallelujah. Somebody scream and give God praise. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, to make sure our people get the vision, uh, we got to go watch for it. Look at your name and say, do you have double vision? Do you have double vision? Are you watching for God and watching for the enemy? Let me preach. Let me preach. And so not only must we watch for the vision, we must also write the vision. Right, right. In our second verse of our lesson text, Rebecca says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Without a writer, the people will miss the vision. Let me get this straight now. First I said, without a watchman, the people will not get their vision. Without a writer, they will miss it. Have you ever missed God sometime? You just got it wrong, you miss God? Well, the reason why you ever been driving and you miss your exit, driving and like, well, where, where I'm supposed to go? Uh, uh, this happens to me a lot when I go back to the airport to return a rent a car. I, I miss my turn. Be you know why? Because it wasn't written clearly where I was supposed to go. And so God says, write the vision and make it plain. You know what that word? One translation says, write it so big 
that even if people are running, they will be able to see it. Write the vision that God has given you so big that, see, because see, let me be real clear. People are busy. People are ripping and running. They in a hurry, get no place. They're on a hamster wheel. They've been running for 10 years, and they're in the same place they was 10 years ago. But they're ripping and running. The Bible says the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things enter in. And people are becoming unfruitful, but they're ripping, but they're running. They're chasing everything to get nothing. Can I preach in this place? I got to get another job, but you're still broke. You're working three jobs, but you still got bills due. Can I preach in this place? place. Uh, and so people are so busy. Uh, and so when people are busy and they, they kind of paying attention but not half paying attention, then you've got to make sure that the vision that God has given you is big. Somebody say big. Uh, see, as Christians, you've got to learn how to go big or go home. Uh, you got to understand that you cannot be uh, a small Christian, a little Christian, a on the down low Christian or a hidden Christian or a sneaky Christian or a uh, 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 I'm a secret agent Christian. Uh, People got to know who you are because their your their vision is in your life. I'm a preacher in this place. You cannot be kind of holy. You got to be holy big. You cannot be kind of saved. You got to be saved big. Now I need y'all to get this because this is vitally important for every saint of God. As the light of the world, people must see God big in your life. Big in somebody say big. People got to see it big. They got to see it big because if they don't see it big, they're going to miss it. See, I'm a preacher in this place. See, God's word is written in the word of God. But see, the word is here. But you all cannot see it because it's too small. It's too small. It's too small. But if I took that same scripture and put it on a billboard, I'm a preacher in this place. And you was running past it, even if you didn't see it the first time, eventually you're going to see for God so loved the world. You're going to see those big words. That's what we represent to this world. We represent God being big in their life. Now, why would people be CIA secret agent Christians? Why would they be small in their Christian walk? Why would they not let people know who they are? Why would we walk around in this world even being the light of the world? Remember the Bible says, I called you the light, but does the light hide it under a bushel? No, he puts it on a candlestick and makes it big so that everybody can see. So why would people hide it? The reason is because the enemy enemy has put a plot out to make us ashamed. I'm going to preach in this place. Uh, to make us ashamed of who we are. But Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before this perverse generation, I will be ashamed of you with my father. Listen, let people talk about you when you show your Christianity big. Let them ridicule you when you show your, who you are big. If you're going to be a preacher, be a big preacher. If you're going to be a teacher, if you're going to be holy, be holy big time. If you're going to be a saint, be a saint of God that everybody knows that you are a saint of God. Well, what if they ridicule me? What if they walk away from you? They may walk away from you, but when they want you, they're going to know where you're at. I'm going to preach all by myself. When they want to be saved, they're going to know who's really saved because all the other saints on the job are going small, but you are going big. Hallelujah. When they're cheating on their wives and cheating on their husbands, and you are showing them what it means to be a good man or a good wife. They may tell you you're crazy. But when they want to get it right, they're going to know who to go to. And so oh, I'm a preacher in this place. See, this is why we don't be ashamed. We don't act small in front of this perverse world. We do it big. I'm a big Christian. I'm a big saint. My God is big and I'm going to be big right along with my God. That's why Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He is the one that gives us power. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to write your life big. Everybody got to see it. Listen, well, what if people walk out? Let them walk out. But if you're big, they're going to know how to walk back in. 
and preach. Let them leave. But if they leave, they're going to know how to get back. To this day, oh, I'm going to preach right now. I know where my mama live. I know where the house is. I know where they keep the spare key. I'm going to preach right here. Because my mama and my daddy live big. And when I want to go back home, I know how to go back home. And there may be some people in your life that have been assigned to you that you might think will walk out if you start living your life big. The devil is a liar. Because God has called you to not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So you let everybody in this world know who you are and whose you are. And you live this thing big. Somebody say big. Say it again, big. I am not ashamed. I will not allow people that God has assigned to my life to miss God because I was acting small. You ain't going to miss God. Now you may walk away from God, but you ain't going to miss him because I'm going to tell you exactly what thus said the Lord. I'm going to show you the vision. I'm going to show you the plan. I'm going to make sure you see it because every time you see me, I'm going to be blinking. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Every time time you see me, you're going to see me living holy, holy, holy. Every time a situation come up, you're going to know that I'm righteous, 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 because I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Push your neighbor and say, neighbor, go big or go home. Say, do it big, do it big. Look, come on, somebody give God a praise right there. If you're going to be saved, be saved big. If you're going to be a preacher, be a preacher big. If you're going to be holy, let the world know I'm holy. Oh, we don't do this because we are saved, sanctified, baptized and filled with that Holy Ghost. You got the Holy Ghost? Yeah, I sure got it. And I'm so satisfied with Jesus. Don't you dare let the world come to work on Monday bragging about how they showed they tell at the club. You go to work telling them how good Jesus has been to you. You don't, don't you let them tell you about what they did on Saturday night. You tell them about what you did on Sunday morning. If the world comes into your life and they dominate the conversation, you are living small. Preach right there. When God puts people in your life, it is for you to shine your light, baby. And so, well, pastor, what if they don't want to go to lunch with me? They will know where you at when they want to get the real word, when they want to get the real truth, when they want to get the real gospel. Somebody scream, do it big, do it big, do it big. Write that vision big. So let me wrap this up. So, 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 as the light of the world, God has called us to shine light on his vision. There are people in your life that don't know where they're going and don't know how to get there. And God is placed you as the light of the world to shine so big. Let me preach about three or four of y'all in here. Some of you are struggling in your marriage but I've come by here to tell you that God called you to make that marriage work and be a light to everybody else around you to let them know that marriage works when you put God at the center. Some of you are struggling with people on your job but God God is about to show you how to overcome evil with good because you are going to be the light of everybody else on that job. You're going to win your children. You're going to win your in-laws. You're going to win everybody that spoke evil against you because what they meant for evil, God's going to turn it around for your good. And so first your job is you've got to watch for the vision. Push that neighbor and say, neighbor, Make sure you have double vision. You want to see coming and going. You want to see God and you want to look at the devil. You want to be sober and vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion is seeking whom he may devour. So first, I am the watchman who watches for the vision. Secondly, we want to make sure people don't miss the vision. So we got to write the vision, but we got to write it big. Ain't don't get no small ballpoint pen. Get you a big old paintbrush and paint it on the side of the wall. Everybody gonna know I'm holy, that 
I'm a saint of God. And when you want real holiness, then you know where to go. I ain't talking about just being comfortable or just going to a social club church. I'm talking about a church of the living God that lives big, shouts big, walks big, talks big, so the world can know it. And so we got to write it big and not be ashamed. And then finally, we got to get people to reveal the vision. Somebody say reveal the vision. Say it again, reveal the vision. So how do we get to the revelation of the vision? Somebody say wait on it. Push your neighbor to act like they sleep. Say neighbor, you're going to have to wait on it. So, so, why do so many people never get to the vision? Because those with the light gave up on the vision. Too many saints have become impatient and given up on the vision. See, saints of God, God called you to be the light of the vision. And people will give up if they see you give up. Let me preach by myself and y'all not going to help me. See, there are people watching your life. And if you give up on your marriage, they'll give up on theirs. If you give up on your dream, they'll give up on theirs. If you walk away from your job, they'll walk away from theirs. If you stop doing your business, they'll stop doing theirs. And so I say, Lord, why would would we who have the light give up and quit? God said the first reason is because some of us got discouraged when we saw other people jumping in line and getting theirs before us. Can I preach all by myself? What do you do when you live holy and the unholy person gets blessed? What do you do when you keep yourself together and the person sleeping around gets married. What do you do when you try to be ethical and the unethical person gets the promotion, becomes the millionaire? Let me tell you what you're going to do. You're going to get like David who said, Lord, I know you're good, even as such to Israel, but my feet had almost slipped when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Lord, I know you're good, but I'm getting a little disappointed when I'm seeing all these ungood people getting ahead. Liars get promoted. Backbiters get rich. Y'all ain't working with me. Unethical people. And so some of us had given up because others were getting ahead. Well, well, then God said some of us gave up on the vision because we lost our hope and we lost our faith. Let me preach to three of you all. You see, saints of God, there are people who gave up on their vision, gave up on their children, gave up on their marriage, gave up on their career because they lost hope that things would ever get better. They may still be there, but they're not hoping for it to get better. I've seen it. They look like the walking day. They're going through the motions, but they don't really want to be there. They're still married, but they don't have any hope that it's going to get better. But I heard the Bible say, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't ever let the devil will take your hope. That's why when Abraham was 99 years old and Sarah was 90, he didn't lose hope that he could still have a child. Y'all ain't working with me. He hoped against hope. He said, I don't know how it's going to happen, but if God said it, that settles it. And somehow God's going to have to wake up the dead to bring it back to life. But I'm a hope when all hope is gone. And then finally, 
Some of us gave up because we've been through too much. We've been hurt too many times. We've been disappointed too much. We've been lied on too much. And I heard the Bible say, many are the afflictions of the righteous. We are troubled on every side. Y'all ain't working with me this morning. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we all been hurt. Say, we all been disappointed. But say, neighbor, I serve a God that can, who died that I might be lived. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. I don't care how much you've been cut. God's going to heal you. I don't care how many times you've been disappointed. God's going to raise you up. I don't care how many times people let you down. God's going to pick you back up. So God said that the answer to revealing the vision was for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it shall speak and not tarry God told me to tell three of you all just because you don't see it don't mean it's not on its way because greater is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof some of y'all quit some of y'all gave up because it's been 10 years but I heard Job say all the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes if it takes two years I'll wait two years if it takes 20 years I'll wait 20 years but I will not quit I will not give up I will not stop they that wait upon the Lord he shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not get weary keep on walking and not faint wait I say on the Lord and he shall he shall bring it to pass get on your feet and give God a praise Get on your feet and praise, praise, praise. What this world needs is saints that won't give up. that won't stop, that won't quit. I remember the saints used to say something like, he said he just don't know it yet. Cause they gonna keep on praying until they get saved. Y'all ain't working with me. Well, she gonna get right, she just don't know it yet. Cause I'm not gonna quit. I'm not gonna give up. Saints of God, there are people that need us to have patience for them. There are people that need us to never turn that light out even when they turn their back on us. As they walk in the way, the light stay on. If they take a peek, they see the light still on. The further away they get, the brighter we shine because we will never quit. We will never give up. We will never stop. To reveal vision to some people, you may have to shine your light for decades. You may have to shine your light through hurt and pain and discouragement. You reach out to people and they slap you. You try to help people and they show no uh, 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 discernible uh, 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 thanks you for it. Uh, you may have to keep doing that over and over and over again because you are the light. Uh, and since God didn't give up on you, uh, don't you dare give up.
give up on anybody else. All the days of your life, as long as you have breath in your body, let your light shine. As long as you can get on your knees and pray. Get on your knees and pray. Oh. saved today. Somebody kept praying for me. Somebody kept shining the light. When I wanted to do my dirt, they didn't just throw me to the wolves. They kept on praying. Kept on coming to get me. Kept on asking me. Kept on calling me. They ain't calling me back. They didn't text me. They blocked me from texting. Facebook me. Instagram. Pray for them. Somebody say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. That's our call. Lift those hands towards heaven. Lift those hands towards heaven. The world needs to see us waiting on the vision. The world needs to see us never quitting, never giving up, never stopping. We are the light of the world. They're going to get their vision through you. They're going to get their vision through you. But you got to watch for it. You got to write it big. And you got to wait on it. Wait till it comes to pass. Put those hands up. Father, in the name of Jesus, every hand is raised. Every hand is raised. Lord, we thank you right now for this word that I am the light. In my world, you've called me to be a light to this world. You've called me to be a lamp. You've called me to be a light. Lord, in the name of Jesus, there are young people in here right now. Hallelujah. That you've called them to be a light even as they go off to college. Hallelujah. There are couples right here that felt like giving up, but you've called them to be a light. Hallelujah. Because they're establishing a generational legacy of marriage. Maybe they grew up and all they ever saw was divorce, but you have called them to be a light in the name of Jesus. Lord, there are people in here right now that have been hurt, battered, bruised, but you called them to never quit, to never give up, to never stop. Hold those hands up and say, Lord, let it be me. Lord, let it be be me. Come on, just cry out to God right there. Cry out to God that, Lord, let my light shine. Lord, don't let me become discouraged. I am the light of this world. I am the light of my friends. I am the light of my co-workers. I am the light of my family. Lord, my child, my son, my daughter is going to see you through me. Lord, my co-workers, my husband, my wife is going to come to know their vision because I'm the light that shines on it. Lord, right now, Lord, even church members that are backslidden are going to see me never quit. See me never give up. I will be the light that you've called for this perverse world. I will be the light that you sit here for a time such as this. I am the light for my home, for my family. I am the light. I am the light. I am the light of this world. In the name of Jesus. Hold those hands up high. Now Father, as we stretch our hands towards you, will you fill us with an anointing that makes our light shine bright. Makes our light shine bright. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There are some people in here that God's getting ready to stir you up for a specific assignment. This word was ministering to you. With those hands raised, I need you to make your way down to this altar. This whole word ministered to you. Come down here real quick. Hallelujah. I see the Holy Ghost all over you. Come here. Come here. Come here. Real quick. Real quick. Just tell the person that's you, excuse me, I got to get to the altar. Pastor needs to lay his hands on me. I'm getting ready to lay hands on a few people right now. Right now, I need you to make your way to this altar. Make your way, make your way, make your way. You have an assignment on your life. The enemy, oh, preach right there, Holy Ghost. Look at me, look at me. Ten of you, right now, make sure you run down here to this altar. Listen to me. You came here because of something that was going on in your life. God says, that ain't the big picture. The big picture is what's going on in the lives of those around you. The enemy is trying to stop you because you are the catalyst for helping them. Whoever I just ministered to, make sure you get to this altar right now. 
I just want to touch you. I want to touch and agree with you. I'm going to spark something on the inside of you. You are the light. There's 10 people that need to come down here to this altar. As I was ministering, I saw the Holy Spirit dealing with you with this word. One of those points touched you specifically. <laughs> Run down here real quick. It's going to take a couple of minutes, but you need to come. You need to come. You need to come. It could be for a marriage. It could be, thank you, Holy Ghost, for a career. Some of you feel like walking away from a job based upon how they've been treating you. God told me to tell you to stay right there. Come down here to this altar. You've been thinking about walking away from a job. God said, don't you walk nowhere, but you stay right there and shine your light. See, God says, I know what the thoughts that I have towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. That don't mean that it's going to happen tomorrow. It just means that it's going to happen. But I saw it. I saw it. I saw a few of you giving up on people because they never reciprocate. God told me, don't you dare give up because you are the vision. You are the light to their vision. And if you ain't down here on this altar, you better hurry up and come here real quick because Satan's on your track trying to turn you back, not because he wants you, but he wants your light to go out to the 10 people around you. Because see, it ain't just about you quitting. It's about making sure them other 10 never get it, that they never get it. Some people were just about to be one to Christ, but we snatched out our light. There are people that gave up on God and people that have been watching them and they let their light go out. They allowed their light to go out. They allowed their light to go out. I want those on this altar to hold those hands up high. When I anoint you, the Holy Ghost told me to tell you that I am putting more oil in your lamp right now. I'm putting more oil in your lamp. The saints of God, I need y'all praying right now, praying right now, praying right now. Lord, let this light go forth. I see it, Holy Ghost. I see it. I see it. I see it. Right now, Jesus. Right now, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's a divine call on your life. There's a divine call on your life. Let this light so shine. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There's a call right here. 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 Thank you, Holy Ghost. Lift up those hands. Lift up those hands. Hallelujah. Darling, I see all types of people around you. Hallelujah. The enemy had you focusing on yourself. But I see people all around you that are looking to you. You may think you're going through hell in a handbasket. But God says you are shining a light. I wish somebody would give God a praise right there. Lord, let this light shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Don't you quit. I heard God say, don't you dare quit. Don't you give up. Don't you stop. Don't you quit. Don't you stop in the name of Jesus. Yes, Holy Ghost. Yes, Holy Ghost. Yes, Holy Ghost. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I will not stop. I will not quit. I will not give up. There's an anointing on my life. There's an anointing for my career. There's an anointing, not for me, but for those I must shine the light on. Shine that light. It is for my home. It is for my children. It is for my family. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I anoint this woman of God right now. You bless her. You heal her. You anoint her to shine that light right now. Shine it so bright uh, that men will see it from all over. Women will see it from all over. Let that light shine. Uh, let it shine, Holy Ghost. Let it shine, Holy Ghost. Let it shine. Uh, let it shine. I see a search, uh, but the search is bigger than you. Uh, the search is for those uh, that have attached themselves to you. Uh, it's bigger than you. Uh, it's more than what you have. Uh, it's what they have. Uh, it's what God wants to do through you, uh, with you. Uh, through them. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes, Lord. 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 Oh, thank you. I saw discouragement. Saying, Lord, it's too late. God says it's never too late. It's never too late. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't stop. Somebody just start praising God right now. Somebody start praising God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Don't let it go out. Don't let it go out right now, Jesus. Up. Oh. 
is. There it is, Holy Ghost. There it is. Release it. Receive it. Receive him. Receive him. Receive him. Receive the Holy Ghost right there. Don't give up, God said. Don't stop. Don't quit. Don't quit. The blessings of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. 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 Yes, Lord. Everybody in this building, lift those hands straight up to God. Everybody lift those hands straight up to God. Just say these words. Say, Lord, you are the light. You called me to be the light. Say, now, Lord, anoint me with an oil so that my light never goes out in Jesus name thank God now give God your biggest praise right there give God your biggest praise give God your biggest praise come on Lord that light ain't gonna go out it's not gonna go out it's not gonna go out Ellerby come here real quick only the Holy Ghost got you on his heart Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Lift those hands up. My God just told me to anoint you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God told me to tell you to stop crying and to start praising. He said, because this is your time to shine brightest. This is your opportunity to win others. In the name of Jesus, the Holy Ghost just said that. I wish somebody would give God a praise. Somebody would give God a praise. Somebody would give God a praise. Uh, uh, Oh. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says rejoice and be exceedingly glad. The Bible says rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Glad. When God calls you, hallelujah, just rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Rejoice in what God is doing. Rejoice in what God is calling. In the name of Jesus. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. The Holy Spirit says, there are several of you came here seeking answers today. God just said to me to tell you, he is the answer. Don't seek anything else but him first. Lord, I don't know how to make this work. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know what to do over here. God says, I am the answer. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Whatever God has for you has got to come through Jesus. Whatever answer he has for you, that vision has got to come through God. He is the answer. Why ever you came here today, your answer is God. I'm about to pray the prayer of salvation. If you're not saved, if you're not sure that you're saved, if you want to recommit your salvation, now is the time for you to come to Jesus. The answer is God. The answer is not how you feel. It's what you know. And the Bible says when you hear the voice of God, do not reject him. Do not harden your heart. Open up your heart and let him in. And he will come in. You do that by praying the prayer of salvation. The prayer of salvation. See, a lot of people think they got to get some things right before they can come to God. They are wrong. All you got to do is accept God and he will come and make things right. You don't need to get it right. You need to accept God and allow him to make it right. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm about to pray the prayer of salvation. The Bible says, if any man will come after me, that means those that got a toe up life, a messed up life, a backslidden life, 
God says, I don't care if any man will come after me, I will accept them. If you want the Lord in your life right now, if you want salvation in your life right now, I want you to take both of your hands and stretch them straight towards heaven and pray this prayer with me. If you want to be saved right now, take both hands and stretch them straight up in the air. Hold them up in the air. Say, I want to be saved. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of not having my vision, not knowing where I'm going, not knowing what to do next. I need direction in my life. I need vision in my life. God says, I am the answer. It's not a job. It's not people. It's not careers. It's not finances. It's God. All of that other stuff comes later. But God, we start with him. If you want to repent before God and let him be your savior. I see two hands, three hands. Who else? Four hands, five. Who wants to pray the prayer of salvation? Hold those hands up high and say this prayer with me as loud as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Say, Lord, I believe you are the Son of God. You died for my sins and you rose again. Say, today, this day, I receive salvation. Today, I belong to God. No matter what, I belong to God. Keep those hands raised. Keep those hands raised. Keep those hands raised. Now I want to invite a few others to join in with this prayer. Now those that prayed that prayer, you are saved. But there are those that are saved that have not been living like God wants them to live. It doesn't disqualify you from God. It just says that I'm not measuring up. To my God's status. And so God says, if you will repent, then I am faithful and just to forgive you. As a matter of fact, Jesus told us to pray this prayer every day. He said, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. He said, how do we know he said pray it every day? Because he said, uh, uh, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. So those that need to pray the prayer of repentance now. Lord, I've fallen short of your glory. There's things in my life that don't need to be there. And I need you to forgive me for them. If you want to pray that prayer, you hold your hand up as high. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of his glory. Say, Lord Jesus, you are my Savior. You are my Lord. I belong to you. Say, Lord... There may be things in my life that don't measure up to you, but you already knew that. And you gave me a way to get forgiven. So, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Say, wash me with your word. Cover me with your blood. Today, I'm yours. I'm still yours. And I will always be yours. Now everybody give God a great big praise right there. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul.